I'm here with Dr. Romano to do a video on aromatics. Hi, I'm Professor Romano. I'm organic chemist here at Romano Scientific and the founder of the Death Destroyer books. What I'd like to do is to go over a question with you that 9 out of 10 students either never do in school or if they do it, they never get it right on the exam. So come on over and let me show you a really great problem. What I'm going to do is something called the elimination addition mechanism. And if you remembered, an aryl halide is very unreactive. It does not do an SN2, nor does it do an SN1 process. But that doesn't mean it's totally inert. If you ever see a base such as NaNH2 or KNH2, you want to be alerted that this is a very, very strong base. It's such a strong base, it can actually deprotonate the hydrogen off a of benzene ring. Now, in this example, I take chlorobenzene and treat it with KNH2, that's potassium amid in ammonia at negative 33 degrees Celsius, and it looks like we did an SN2. We kicked off the chlorine and put on the NH2 group, but it's not an SN2, because you can't do a backside attack. It's not an SN1 because you don't form a carbocation on a benzene ring. It's too unstable. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this thing called an elimination addition mechanism. In the very first step, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that the aromatic halide here has a pKa of around 40. So in the first step, I'm going to use that strong base to form my carbanion. And I remove the H adjacent to the chlorine. Now, here's the elimination step. You're not going to like this. Chlorine can leave and this bond can move down and we form a very, very unstable intermediate. And boy, are these bonds twisted. That intermediate is known as benzene. Now, this benzene, if you look here, can be hit by an incoming nucleophile at this carbon or this carbon. Doesn't matter which one, these are equivalent. So if the NH2 attacks and this bond moves out, this is the addition step. So we did an elimination, now we do an addition, and then all we do is pick up an H from the ammonia solvent and that would make aniline. So I've gone from chlorobenzene to aniline using this elimination addition mechanism. Let me show you a challenge problem that I think you'll enjoy. This next question is a favorite question of all organic chemistry teachers. They love to hammer you guys. Um, I couldn't believe if this didn't land on your exam. If you got this on an exam, this is the question we must ask. I'm going to radio label carbon and I'm going to put a 14 there. So 14 is a radio labeled carbon. And I'm going to treat it with NaNH2 and ammonia like we just did, but surprisingly, I get two products. In the first product, looks like we just did, we, we placed the chlorine with the nucleophile. Here it's NH2, but if you look here, we only get 50%. The NH2 also goes to the adjacent carbon. So we're going to form two products. We're going to put the NH2 here and the NH2 here. So it's going to be put on on two spots. How could this be justified? What we would first do in the first step is start us off, don't lose track of the 14, so I put it in red. I deprotonate it first, and I form my carbon ion. Then I do my elimination step, and I form benzene. Now, I want you to look at benzene. This benzene has a radioactive carbon here and a, radio, a regular carbon here. If you remember in general chemistry, isotopes have virtually identical chemical and physical properties. So that means that they're both susceptible to be hit by the nucleophile. So let's hit the other carbon first. So as you can see, if the NH2 comes in and hits this carbon and this moves out, that would give me this and then simply pick up a proton and that would show how we form this. These are the same. As you can see, I put on the NH2 on the carbon adjacent to the radio label. Or if you go back, instead of hitting this carbon, why don't we make the nucleophile attack the radio labeled carbon? And if I did that, electrons move out, 
and you form the second carbanion, but this time the nucleophile is on the radio label carbon, pick up an H, and you got your second product. So as you can see, for the, this is actually a question in the destroyer. This is a hard question, but I want you to make sure you can spot what's called this elimination addition mechanism. Look for an aryl halide with either sodium or potassium amid, or a very similar super strong base. I hope this helps on a very challenging question, but if you're looking for the 30, this is a must have on your reactions of aryl halides. All right, good day to you, and I will see you in study group. Bye-bye.